Every narrative deals with opposites. It is one of the defining elements for creating dramatic tension. This dramatic tension is what keeps us engaged in a story. The four types of dramatic tension in classical drama are relationships, tasks, surprises and mysteries. Tension of relationships explore the tension between characters, family members, lovers. The tension of the task focuses on the task the characters want to accomplish. Tension of the surprise hooks us into the story with unexpected events. Tension of mystery, however, keeps us engaged in the story by our desire for resolution, or simply put, by the need to find out what exactly happened. Either one of these tensions can be the backbone of a compelling narrative. They don't ensure, of course, a great story, but they surely are part of every great one. What they all have in common is, in my opinion, crucial for analyzing Taiwanese director Chang Mong Hong's 2019 film A Sun. In all these types of dramatic tensions, we deal with opposites. In relationships, it could be summed up as love versus hate. In tasks, it's success versus failure. In surprises, it's ordinary versus extraordinary. And in mysteries, it's the known versus the unknown. The movie follows Aho Chen and his friend Radish committing a violent crime at the beginning of the movie. Ho is sent to a juvenile detention facility while Radish, the one who actually committed the crime, is sent to prison. Ho's father, Wen, is reluctant to defend his son, for he holds the belief that he failed as a father in disciplining him. What follows is a series of events in which we learn that Ho, prior to committing the crime, impregnated a 15-year-old girl named Yu. She wants to keep his baby, and since she is an orphan, Ho's mother, Chin, agrees to the girl staying with them until Ho gets out of detention in three years' time. We also meet Hao, the second son of the Chan family and Ho's older brother. Unlike Ho and his wasted potential, Hao seems to live by the slogan his father is constantly repeating, seize the day, decide your path. Hao is preparing for medical school and has all the markings of a poster child. However, we immediately come to know him as being extremely shy and down to earth when it comes to the potential everybody ascribes to him. He finds shelter in form of a romantic interest, Chen, his classmate, although the movie doesn't go too deep into exploring it at first. Meanwhile, Ho is going to the usual fiery baptism oftentimes portrayed in movies about prison life. He gets into trouble with older inmates, only to later crack the social code and become part of the gang, for lack of a better word. Ho's mother, Chin, keeps quiet about Yu and the pregnancy during their weekly visits. However, when Hao and Yu later visit Ho alone, Hao decides to inform his younger brother about the pregnancy. Ho is furious for having been kept in the dark about it. Any attentive viewer could easily guess how the story would unfold from here on out. Director Chong, however, throws us a curveball and twists the narrative in an unexpected direction. Wen, the father, wakes up in the middle of the night by his neighbor who informs him that Hao's body is found lying on the ground floor of the apartment complex the family lives in. After the funeral, Hao's mother is approached by Chen, Hao's girlfriend she didn't know about, who shares Hao's last message with her. In it, Chen finds out that Hao was feeling burdened by the expectations put on him. Chen described him as giving all the goodness to others and forgetting to keep any for himself, after which she tells Chen about the last conversation she had with him. He asked her what do you think is the fairest thing in the world, his own answer to the question being the son. After Hao's death, Yu and Ho marry while Ho is still in the detention center. Ho moves back home after one and a half years in detention. Wen, Ho's father, continues to ignore him and even sleeps in the break room of his workplace just to avoid being in the same place as his son. 
In the meantime, Ho cleans up his act and gets two jobs in order to provide for his family. Working in a car wash during the day and in a convenience store at night. One night, unaware that his son works there, Van walks into the convenience store to buy cigarettes. They have a short conversation and seem to reconcile. Ho informs him that he will move out and get a place of his own. Three years later, Reda shows up, freshly released from prison. He starts visiting Ho at the car wash, asking him for money and favors. Ho is in distress by his presence, but has no choice but to indulge in the games he plays with him. The symbolism of Ho cleaning cars and Radish being a threat to his efforts plays well with the overarching theme of the struggle of redemption and getting back into society. Ho is an example of someone who actually benefited from being locked up, while Radish seems to have been pushed even further into the world of crime. After asking Ho for money and favors, and guilt-tripping him for not visiting him in prison after Ho got out, Radish disappears for a while. Ho's father, Wen, becomes concerned about Radish and tries to bribe him in order to stay away from his son. Radish, however, dismisses his offer and lets him and us know that there seems to be no turning back on the path he's on. Radish visits Ho again at night in the car wash and coerces him into going for a ride with an expensive client's car. After arriving to a remote property, Radish hands Ho a backpack and instructs him to deliver it to someone inside the house. Ho does so and gets a large sum of money in exchange for it. When he arrives back at the car, however, Radish is nowhere to be found. Ho drives back to the car wash and starts cleaning up the car. Sometime later, Ho is kidnapped by a group of gangsters who demand the money Ho got. When he gives it to them, they seem to be surprised that he didn't spend any of it. The leader of the gangsters then tells Ho that Radish will no longer be a problem since he was found dead in a ditch. They give him some of the money and release him. Meanwhile, we watch Ho's father Wen and his mother Chin visiting Hao's grave, after which they decide to go on a hike. Chin accuses Wen of not being there for Ho and not living up to the motto he constantly repeats, seize the day, decide your path. Wen then tells Chin how he has been skipping work in order to keep an eye on Ho. We learn that he was there the night Radish and Ho drove to the remote property. He followed them in his car and once Ho went to deliver the package, Wen ran down Radish with his car and hid his body. The movie ends when Ho and his mother, sometime later, go through Hao's belongings and discover a stack of old notebooks his father gifted to him for medical school. They all had Wen's motto written on them, seize the day, decide your path. Hao never used them. Ho and his mother then decide to go on a bike ride through the park. Right off the bat we notice that the four types of dramatic tensions we mentioned in the beginning are present throughout this movie. Relationships between all the characters is what drives the narrative. The tension of tasks is manifested in Ho's attempt to provide for his family and getting back on track. Surprises are constantly delivered and subvert our expectations, the biggest one being Ho's sudden suicide. Even the tension of mystery is present in the last act with Radish disappearing and us waiting to find out what happened to him. Chang hits all these notes almost perfectly in his movie. The relationships are fleshed out, the surprises and twists are unexpected and yet believable. The tasks are relatable and the mystery enticing while not too elaborate to take away from the naturalistic qualities the movie portrays about family pushed to the edge by tragic events. One of the main themes that stood out to me, however, is the question of opposites and how they are used to define subjects in this world. In order to talk about this, I will shortly touch on the theory of structuralism. Originally introduced in linguistics by Swiss linguist Ferdinand de Saussure, structuralism is a theory which implies that all elements of culture possess meaning due to their relationship to other elements in the same structure. According to structuralism, no sign has a positive value in itself. Its meaning is only derived out of the difference and the contrast to other signs in that same system. 
In other words, we only know the meaning of something because we understand how it differs from everything else. This is especially easy to spot with concepts that we view as binary opposites. Male, female, black, white, small, big, rich, poor, good, evil and so on. In the case of Chang's movie, I will focus on the dichotomy of absolute good and absolute evil, which are represented by Hao and Radish, respectively. We don't need to go into great detail about both of these characters in order to see how they represent these two absolutes. Hao is morally incorruptible and concerned with the state of the world in terms of fairness and how it is distributed. Radish, on the other hand, is irredeemably evil, even when he has the chance of redemption. He is not concerned about how fortune is distributed among people. He cares solely about how much of fortune and goodwill he himself receives. We could debate about all the factors that played a role in forming these two individuals. About possible social and economic inequalities which led to the personalities they have. That certainly is an important discussion to have before labeling someone as evil. The movie, however, doesn't go as far as to give us enough information about their development. Both Hao and Radish don't evolve over the course of the movie. There is no character arc, nor is there any insight into what made them think and behave the way they do. We don't even get a satisfying explanation about Hao's motive to commit suicide. What we get is guessing that his goodness simply couldn't cope with the world he was living in. Radish and his origin of being evil is not explained either, which opens up the question as to why we are always more eager to question the roots of evil but never seem to ask ourselves what led to someone being good. For the sake of this analysis, we will take these two characters as presented in the scope of the narrative. They are two binary opposites and as such they define each other by difference, by the contrast between them. Hao is good because he is the opposite of Radish who is evil. This type of dichotomy is the driving force in most narratives, good versus evil, light versus darkness and so on. Of course, there are many narratives that try to blur these lines by giving good characters flaws and evil characters some redeeming qualities. In the end, however, it mostly comes down to a clear distinction, a clear divide between good and evil. The movie A Sun drops this blurring of the lines altogether. The narrative is not interested in questioning Hao's goodness nor Radish's evilness. It does so for the sake of telling a much more interesting story. A story about Ho and how he tries to fit in as some kind of third part in this dualistic view of the world. If we go back to structuralism, we will not find an easy answer to where Ho fits in. Sure, we could put him opposite of his brother and define him as being evil, or we could put him opposite of Radish and define him as being good. But this is not a true reflection of reality. In reality, Ho exists as opposite to both Hao and Radish at the same time, which structuralism is not very keen of. It is also one of the many criticisms structuralism received over the years. Ho is a wrench thrown in the carefully crafted gears of our dualistic view of the world. For if we are able to easily distinct between good and evil, our lives could make sense to us. We would be able to summarize our existence in a simple motto, like seize the day, which is exactly what Ben, the father, is hoping for. If we define, however, absolute good and absolute evil as something that doesn't change and which doesn't really exist as a part of our world, we have to question the structure and the references upon which we are building our meanings. French philosopher Jacques Derrida criticized structuralism and his adherence towards these binary sets of concepts. While the structuralists see meaning as a property a concept has because of the difference towards another concept, Derrida viewed meaning as something that emerges out of the endless interplay of two signifiers. Here's a short example. Ferdinand de Saussure 
viewed a sign as being composed of the signifier and the signified. For example, the word tree is an expression, the signifier, which refers not to a tree as a physical object, but to the psychological concept of a tree. He called this concept the signified. In his opinion, the signifier tree is arbitrarily determined, but the concept of a tree is absolute. In terms of the movie, we can view Howe and his actions as being the signifier, that is the expression, which alludes or refers to the concept of absolute goodness, while Radish's actions are signifiers which refer to the concept or the signified of absolute evilness. Derrida criticizes this structuralistic reference system between signifier and signified by stating that the signifier signifier tree does not only refer to a signified, the psychological concept of a tree, but also to everything what it not means. If, for example, we say the word woman, we are not just referring to the concept woman, we also conjure up everything that that signifier does not refer to, man, child, car, and so on. Derrida called this absence of presence in a signifier the trace. In the movie, when we think of Howe and his actions, we are not only seeing the manifestation of goodness, but also the absence of evilness. Same with Radish. His actions conjure up not just the concept of evilness, but also the lack of goodness. Derrida argued that this property of signifiers, the property of carrying in themselves not just a reference to concepts, but also a trace of what they don't mean, is what creates meaning. Howe's goodness and Radish's evilness play off of each other, referring back and forth to each other, while never truly referring slowly to the absolute concept of good or evil. In this interplay of signifiers, in this endless loop of referencing each other, the only true meaning is born. Ho. The only reality of existence that can truly be is that which emerges from the expressions of absolute concepts. Absolute goodness cannot exist, so how dies. Absolute evilness cannot exist, so Radish dies too. If they didn't die, Ho could never be defined. His existence would forever be caught up in this back and forth of expressions of good and evil. Although a son is a drama in the truest sense of the word, it doesn't shy away from being funny sometimes. The somber themes it deals with are often accented with light-hearted, albeit bittersweet moments of silliness. I guess, just as in real life, the sun shines fair on all of our experiences equally. Thank you for watching.